Hello everyone, welcome in this session of financial reporting by Senior Huntington, your tutor in accounting. Now to learn quickly and efficiently, I have created a YouTube channel in names of Tutor Key Master. Now do you want to have access to a tutor who can answer your questions and give you the support you need? Senior Huntington will provide you with that support. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel and you get all the support you need because I am dedicated to the success of students. So you get support and I believe you can get this support either by phone or by email and all your questions will be answered within 48 hours. Now today, of course, we are going to look at IAS 20 government grants. This is a key syllabus area in paper 8 that is financial reporting level 2 so students out there for cpa financial reporting level 2 just get your notebook and get a piece of pen then you will see what ias 20 is all about now is 20 of course is straightforward so meaning that a well-prepared candidate should score strongly here in this topic now, we know that in many countries, the government provides financial assistance to the different industries within the country. The most common form of such assistance is a grant of cash from the local or national government. And such grants are defined by IS-20 as either government grants related to assets or government grants related to incomes. Now, we are going to see what government assistances are what government grants are and then what are the different forms of government grants and the different forms of government assistances then we are going to look at the accounting treatment of government grants and then the information that should be disclosed in the notes to the financial statements of course we are going to start with government assistances now when it comes to government assistances that is all about the action by the government designed to provide economic benefits specific to an entity or a range of entities qualifying under a certain criteria. Meaning that these assistances are always extended to specific entities or a range of entities, but these entities should qualify under a certain, under a certain criteria. What are the forms of government assistances? Now, we have different forms of government assistance, but under government assistances, you may find the government providing training programs, to employees in different sectors of the economy. There can be interest-free loans extended to the different entities. So all those are forms of government assistances. There can be strategies by the government to purchase a portion of the company's products, all that is assistance. Then you also have what you call government grants. Now, government grants, this is any assistance by the government in the form of transfer of resources to an entity in return for past or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity, meaning that you should be able to distinguish between a government assistance and a government grant because the distinction between the two is a common question in paper 8. You may be required distinguish between government assistances and government grants under IAS 20. So government grants, that is all about any assistance by the government in the form of transfer of resources to an entity in return for past or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity. Meaning that when it comes to government grants, there are conditions which have to be fulfilled for this entity to get that assistance. So you should know the distinction between government grants and government assistances. Now, when it comes to government grants, we have different forms of government grants. We have grants related to assets. We have grants related to incomes. Then we may also have what we call non-monetary government grants. What are grants related to assets? Now, when it comes to grants related to assets, these are government grants whose primary condition is that the entity qualifying for them should either purchase 
construct or otherwise acquire long-term assets. Those are grants related to assets. So meaning that if you're to qualify for such a grant, the condition is you should purchase, construct or acquire long-term assets. Then what are grants related to incomes? When it comes to grants related to incomes, these are government grants other than those related to assets. Government grants other than those related to assets. Talk about government grants uh, in form of uh, extending assistance for training programs, marketing campaigns, and so on. So those are government grants related to incomes. So their condition is known to primarily acquire or construct long-term assets. So such grants where the condition is known to purchase a long-term asset, then those can be classified as grants related to incomes. Then we also have what we call non-monetary government grants. Now when it comes to non-monetary government grant, Government grants may take any other form of a transfer of a non-monetary asset. Take an example. A government providing land to an entity or any other resource, but it is not transferring cash to this entity. So if that is the case, then these grants are referred to as or can be classified as non-monetary government, non government grants. The government is providing either land or any other resource. You can talk about the government providing uh, IT equipments to schools. Now those are non-monetary government. Those are non-monetary government grants. So you should know those different forms of government grants. Grants related to assets, grants related to incomes, and then non-monetary government, and then non-monetary government grants. Now we need to look at the accounting treatment. We need to look at the accounting. We need to look at the accounting treatment of government grants. Now, before we look at the accounting treatment, we need to know when should an entity recognize a government grant in its financial statements. Now, IS20 states that an entity should recognize a government grant if and only if there is reasonable assurance that the grant will be received and that the entity will comply with any conditions attaching to that government grant. So once those two conditions have been met, then the entity is recognized. Then the entity is required to recognize a government grant in its financial statements. So meaning that if those conditions are not met, then an entity is not required to recognize government grants in its financial statements. Now, under IS20, we have two approaches. We have what we call the income approach as well as the capital approach. Now, once those conditions have been met, IS20 requires the use of the income approach, meaning that we should recognize these government grants as income in the statement of profit or loss to match them with the related costs they have been received to compensate. So don't recognize government grants under equity, but recognize them in profit or in profit or loss as income simply to match them with the related costs that they have been received to, to compensate. That is the income approach. So you always use a systematic basis of matching over the relevant periods. Take an example. You have received a government grant to acquire a long-term asset whose useful life is five years, meaning that we are going to systematically recognize grant income and profit or loss for a period of five years. So that is the systematic basis of matching over the relevant periods. Then, of course, grants for depreciable assets should be recognized as income on the systematic basis as the asset is depre, as the asset is depreciated. So, if it's a grant related to an asset, recognize the grant income and profit or loss, but also don't forget to depreciate the asset. 
then grants for non-depreciable assets should be recognized as income over the periods in which the cost of meeting the obligation is is incurred. Basically, those are grants related to related to incomes. Now, when it comes to a grant in the form of a non-monetary asset, these government grants should also be recognized, but we value them at fair value or nominal value. Remember, fair value that is covered under IFRS 13 fair value measurements. Now, grants related to assets may be presented in the statement of financial position either as deferred income or deducted in arriving at the current value of the asset. So when it comes to grants related to assets, we have two methods of presentation of these government grants. The first method is you can deduct the grant from the cost of the asset. So meaning that in the statement of financial position, the asset is presented at its cost minus the government grant. But don't forget that these assets should also be depreciated. So meaning that we depreciate the net amount that is getting the cost of the asset minus the government grant then that amount which is net is what we depreciate over the useful life of the asset so that is one method then the second method is always treating the grant as deferred income and recognize it as income on a systematic basis over the useful life of, of the asset those are the two methods of presenting government grants related to related to assets then you also have grants related to income. Now, when it comes to these government grants related to incomes, we still have two methods of presentation of these government grants. Either we can include the grant as other income for inclusion in the statement of profit or loss. So meaning that get that grant for the period, take it under other incomes. After getting your gross profit, then you will say other incomes then you say grant income, then you recognize that. That is the first method. Alternatively, we can deduct the grant for the period from the related expense. Just assume that maybe the company receives a grant uh, towards the cost of training young employees. So meaning that we get the cost of training, we minus the grant received, then that is the second method of treating these government grants related to income. So either recognize the grant as income, that is under the other incomes, or deduct the grant for the period from the related expense. Now we should not forget that government grants are not repaid. So if there is any repayment of government grants, then we should account for that repayment as a revision of an accounting statement under IAS 8 accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and prior period errors. Now, what are the disclosures? What are the disclosures when it comes to IAS 20? Now, IAS 20 requires the following disclosures in the notes to the financial statements. The first disclosure is that we have to disclose the accounting policy note adopted for the government grants, government assistances, including the method of presentation in the statement of financial position. For example, if it's a government grant rate asset, the entity has to disclose the method of presentation. Have you used the deferred income approach or you have deducted the government grant from the cost of the related asset. So such methods of presentation should be disclosed in the notes to the financial statements. Then the nature and the extent of the government grants recognized in the financial statement and any other form of government assistance from which the entity has directly benefited, all these should be disclosed in the financial statements. Is it a government grant related to an asset? Is it a grant related to an income? Or it is a non-monetary government grant? So we have to disclose the nature and extent of these government grants. 
then any unfulfilled conditions and other contingencies attached to the government grants and assistance. That is, if the grants and assistances have been recognized in the financial in the financial statements. Then maybe we can also go through this question and we see. Remember, IS20 requires the use of the income approach. So never recognize government grants under the equity section of the statement of financial position. So we have a sample question here. IS20 suggests that there are two approaches to recognizing government grants. That is the capital approach, where you credit directly to shareholders' interest, and the income approach, that is when you recognize the government grant in profit or in profit or loss as an income. Now, IS20 requires the use of the income approach, yes, but what are the arguments in support of each of the methods? Now, this is not a common question, but it is also a key area under IAS 20. Now, for the CPA financial reporting students out there, you can get the November 2019 question paper. There was a question about IS 20, and part A of the question was all about the arguments in support of the capital and the income approach. So let us see the arguments in support for each of these two methods. Of course, we are going to start with the capital approach. Remember, under the capital approach, we recognize the government grant in the equity section of the statement of financial position. Now, what are the arguments in support for the capital approach. Now, IS20 says that the grants are a financing device. Remember, anything which is a financing device, that should be recognized under the equity section of the statement of financial position. So, the grants are a financing device. So, should go through profit or loss for the year, they would simply offset the expense which they are financing. No repayment is expected by the government, so the grants should be credited directly to the shareholders' interest. Because these government grants are a financing device, and they're not going to be repaid, so that is one of the arguments that they should be taken to the credit of the shareholders' interest. So... Government grants can be seen as a financing device. That is one of the arguments in support for the capital, in support for the capital approach. Then the other argument is that government grants are not earned. They are incentives without related costs. So it is very wrong to take them to profit or take them to profit or loss. Thus, we should recognize them in the equity section of the statement of financial position because anything earned should be recognized through profit or loss. That because these government grants are not earned, we should take them to the statement of financial position under the equity section. So they are just incentives without any related costs. So there is no need of taking them to profit or to profit or loss. Those are some of the arguments in support for the capital approach. Now, what about the income approach? Why do we need to recognize this government grant in the statement of profit or loss as income, but not under the equity section? One of the arguments in support of the income approach is that government grants are not received from the shareholders. So why do we take them to the credit of the shareholders' interest? They're not from shareholders. So... We should recognize them in profit or in profit or loss as income. That is in support of the income approach. Then grants are not given or received for nothing. No. There are always conditions which you have to comply to. So meaning that there can be associated costs with which the grant can be matched in profit or loss for the year as these costs are compensated by the government grant. So government grants are not given or received for nothing. There is always a cost which is incurred. Remember, you have to comply with the conditions. 
So you should always recognize them in profit or loss. Remember the matching concept or the matching principle of accounting. Always match the costs with the related the revenues. And you do that through the statement of profit or through the statement of profit or loss. Then grants are an extension of fiscal policies and so as income and other taxes charged against income. So grants should also be credited to income. So those are the arguments in support for the income approach. So you should know the arguments in support for the income approach as well as the capital approach as well as the accounting treatment of grants related to assets, grants related to incomes, repayment of government grants. Then you should also be able to distinguish between government grants and government assistances. So that was a short summary about IS-20. And this video is relevant to students so financial reporting, that is paper 8, and then advanced financial reporting paper 13. Maybe in my next video, I will look at the computation part of IS-20. I'll get an exam number. Then we try to go through that and we see how we can account for government grants related to assets as well as government grants related to incomes as well as the repayment of government grants. So share the video to your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for that support you need. Uh, you post your questions there in the comments section. You will get all the feedback you need either by email or by a telephone call. So thanks for watching.